Laura Carranza joins us right now. She wrote a book called Ugly Love, a survivor's story of narcissistic abuse. She's an expert on narcissism and how we wanted her own for one reason and one reason only. Why is that? I have a 17-year-old son, Laura. Uh, <laughs> no, who, like every other... Yeah, okay, who, like every other 17-year-old, thinks the world revolves around him. No, uh, no, seriously. We, we see this in young people, uh, and, and some people lay, label it as narcissism, you know, that they, they, hey, from their perspective, what they're going through, what they're experiencing, what their day is like is the most important thing in the world. And you're here to tell us that that's not necessarily odd thinking, huh? No, most likely what your son and mine are going through, and then all of their friends and their friends and their friends, um, it's like a phenomenon, right? And it's happened for centuries. Is It's just a normal part of development that some people and most children develop some narcissistic tendencies just to get through life, to be able to interview for a job, stand on a stage and make a speech, do what you guys are doing, me, talk to you live on the radio. <laughs> it takes a little confidence. It's when it becomes overboard. Um, and usually that's not diagnosed until adulthood. How do you tell when that happens? It's what they call a megalomanic activities. It's when you see a child that is inclined toward getting power in every situation, maybe in the classroom, on the playground, at home. They um, have um, unhealthy attention-seeking behaviors. Maybe they're the bully on the playground, or they continually hurt their sister or brother physically. Uh, that's when it's time to just get the child evaluated by a therapist. Hmm. Hey, why are you looking at me, Laura? <laughs> I'm not looking. At I'm looking at you. <laughs> the whole radio station's looking at yeah, you. Exactly. Are you crazy? But, but not for long. Uh, <laughs> uh, Laura, hey, a uh, quick question for you. Uh, Donald Trump, is, is Donald Trump a narcissist? I have asked, let me just quote, <laughs> I have asked several therapists, that are friends of mine and one that is my therapist who says yes narcissism is at the hub of the wheel of many disorders including sociopathy so being a sociopath i'm just going to leave it at that um psychopathy um obsessive compulsive disorder many disorders like that but and and, and by the way i think i single out donald trump and that's probably unfair i probably should say politicians that's a good that's better you know I mean, we, we, and I know that's a broad brush to paint with, but there—I mean, there are a lot of politicians that you could lump into that category. I think, Laura. There are. Every year, there comes out like a list of the five top professions for narcissists, and one is always being in the C-suites at a corporation, right? Yeah. Like being oh, yeah. CFO, CEO. Um, the second one is being a police officer, and this is in no particular order. Uh-huh. Um, the third is being like a pastor. Right. And um, one is being a politician. So, yes. Yeah. And no. It just probably depends on the person having that position. Uh, I want to go back to a comment uh, that we uh, just had. And, and Laura Carranza joins us right now, author of Ugly Love, a Survivor's Story of Narcissistic Abuse. And the, we were kind of focused in on children and, and how there may be stages of narcissism that they go through that you hope that they grow out of. Um, but we were we were talking about politicians, and, and you use the word psychopath, um, and we were talking about one in particular. But but I, I wonder, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to word this correctly. How okay. is are there any positives to being a psychopath, Laura? Excuse the dogs; they're That's excited okay. that we're on the radio. Um, mm-hmm. Psychopaths are the ones that you see primarily. In the prison system, so okay. I would not think that there are any. What? What? what uh, then, what about sociopath? Sociopaths can do what they need to do to get to the top, and the people that they step on, no, I, I don't think that there are any positives to that. To that at all. Is there a difference between a narcissist and a person who does seem to be always right? You know, is there, in other words, is there a difference between narcissism and self-confidence? Well, think about um, it takes nine traits of narcissism to takes five of the nine to get someone on to be truly diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. Mm-hmm. If you look up this manual that psychologists and psychiatrists use to diagnose these people, 
there are nine traits of narcissism. You have to have five of the nine. So if a person only has one or two, sure, mm-hmm. they have some traits, but they're not a full-blown narcissist. Okay. okay. Something right. to track, though. Laura, good luck with your 15-year-old. Yes. No, yes, yeah, 16. We're driving. 16. Stay off the roads. Yeah, stay off the roads. Good luck with <laughs> when that. I, Laura, when, when my kids turn teenagers, I always said, listen, I'm... We're going to take you back to the hospital and start over. <laughs> so, no, thank you for that. You know, there you go. Okay, that's my tip. Yeah, uh-huh. some fascinating stuff, though, because, you know, as 15, 16, 17-year-olds, it, it is as if the world revolves around them. Yeah, well, it, uh, um, that's, that's, I think that's just the kids. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. I, I, uh, apparently You've it's part of this. you you're blessed with good kids. And the, yeah. I was, and so, yeah. And, and, and you think to yourself, what did I do wrong? But apparently you don't do anything wrong. Nothing. Yeah. 